It's really about uh, a, a moment in history and on this campus and in the surrounding community in which people asked themselves and sought to address this question. What kind of community are we going to be a part of? It really, ex in a way, almost ex exacerbated the sense of, okay, we're young people, and he's like, old people don't know what they're doing, and this country's a real mess, and we have to stand up, and wherever we happen to be, we're going to use those sites and make our views known. It means that you can take on an institution with a popular movement, and you can move. In April 1968, uh, students gathered at the Sundial in the middle of campus uh, to protest a number of things that they were uh, concerned about. Uh, there, was the, there were students who were concerned about the university's complicity in the Vietnam War effort. They were critical of the university's relationship with the Institute for Defense Analysis. They were upset about the university's uh, allowing of CIA recruitment on campus. Then you have students who are upset about Columbia University's relationship to the surrounding Harlem community, and in particular its decision to build a, par a gym in Morningside Park. The crowd at the Sundial got bigger and bigger. There were probably 500 to 1,000 people there uh, listening to the speeches as much as they could. I stood on the edge of the crowd because I was getting ready for the march up the steps. And I just walked up to the sundial and Mark Rudd looked down and said, Tommy, uh, what, what, do you, what, what do you think? And so I stepped up on the sundial and I said, I think we came here to march on Lowe Library and we should go march on Lowe Library. So I just went there um, and, you know, watched as things unfolded. Um, but it didn't really, you know, in a way it's hard, there really wasn't an architect of the strategy because the strategy really, you know, evolved over time. And even the thing about then there were four buildings that were occupied in addition to Hamilton, that also happened very spontaneously. They, we had tried every way possible to convince them to change their, their policies. They wouldn't do it. And so finally we, we made a, a, a really dramatic movement which was to occupy, begin to occupy buildings on the campus. Uh, the people who really showed us what to do and how to do it were the black students. So they felt that they should occupy Hamilton Hall alone, which they did. And then we went off and occupied several other buildings uh, with whoever who wanted to come in. As the negotiations sort of come to a stalemate as the week goes on, uh, uh, and at the end of uh, April 29th, there's a moment where it seems like there could be some resolution to the crisis, but uh, the, the agreements that are trying to be hashed out between the faculty mediators, the students and the administration fall apart. And so at two o'clock in the morning, April 30th, the police come in and they start clearing the buildings. Look, it's been two days and we've taken five buildings. Hamilton, Lowe, Avery, Fairweather, and Mann. If you've got the administration figured right, they're up to calling the cops. And when they do, we want to be here. There were people who were sitting in front of the buildings who were trying to stop the police. Uh, uh, they were kind of pacifist groups who were sitting in front of the buildings. They were beaten mercilessly. <laughs> then they got into the buildings uh, and they, the cops then uh, would take a lot of students, the, the first group out relatively peacefully, and then the ones that they were spread in the rooms in the building, they just beat terribly. So there were lots of injuries. Uh, people were badly hurt. The police had been sitting and waiting for days to start this and had getting, were getting more and more angry, and uh, it didn't help. Uh, many are arrested, 712 are arrested, most of them Columbia and Barnard students, though not all of them. Uh, and, and, uh, and it really is a, uh, an event, though, that is painful because of the violent uh, nature of the bust. But then the protests sort of continue, even in subsequent weeks and years after that, right? And what happens essentially is the demands of many of the students are actually met. So the gym project is halted. Uh, in 1969, the, the administration uh, ceases the gym project. There is a gym that's eventually built on campus. 
Uh, the IDA's relationship with Columbia is severed, uh, which was a pretty major victory for the students. Uh, and one of the things that the protests also bring up is the real the lack of representation uh, in the governance of the institution, right? Students and faculty have very little say in how the university was run. And so one of the consequences of the protests is the creation of the University Senate, which is, in theory, a body that's designed to represent the various interests on campus in making a, a decision making with respect to university affairs. You know, I, th I think beside um, some of what, what you could call the immediate victories of that struggle, which is that, you know, uh, Columbia divested from, you know, uh, companies that, that, that had those connections to uh, the war machine, you know, doing the enterprise, uh, that the expansion didn't happen, was the expansion of consciousness, was that people began to think, and those students uh, and community folk who were involved began to think of their work differently began to think of their work in the community, here at the university, and beyond the university, as connected to an international struggle for liberation. Nobody was punished. They stopped the gym, they got rid of the IDA, and they, they did a certain amount of restructuring of the university. So, uh, you know, I, I think we did okay. Say, you know, there was music around, there was rock music, there was older folks, there was, you know, staying, staying out way past my curfew and, you know, um, having somebody call my grandmother and said, it's okay, he's at Columbia University, or he's working in a community program. They wouldn't say the Black Panther office. So uh, it was all of that mixed up into one. It was a wild, amazing ride. And even then, I have to say, even then, you knew that you were part of something bigger than yourself and something that was probably going to be historic. Youth are, to quote a really, really wise man, Bill T. Jones, the young are biologically predisposed to optimism, to hope. And uh, that's good. That's part of why we've succeeded as a, as a species up till now, <laughs> is that the young, the young have pushed us to all of our big changes. And that's the way it should be.